I'd like to talk about nonprofit organizations. I used to have one of my own. We were only two people in it. That's okay. We didn't make any money. We didn't take a salary. We just put it back into the organization. Anyway, I closed it and I donated whatever <laughs> materials, assets it had to another nonprofit organization. Because my partner was doing unethical things, I had to end that quickly. Anyway, there's only one organization I give money to, and that's it. The Ellis Island Statue of Liberty, because it's a wonderful thing. Anyone could go online on their website and look up the ship's manifest lists and see their relatives that might have come here and there's a lot of uh, fascinating information on those lists uh, if the person was literate if they could read or write their mother's name the city they came from their age um, and you might find out things that you didn't know before. I found out something, I think it was in 2015, that information had been there since 1909. Over 100 years, some very important family information. And nobody bothered to look it up. You might say, well, there weren't computers then. Yes, but if somebody lives like almost across the street in Manhattan from the ferry that takes you to the Ellis Island physical building and you could look up the records there. Why didn't they do that? I guess people get uh, busy trying to make money and survive and then they want more money, etc., uh, etc. Et so I'm the only one. So when I found out about our family heritage in 2015. I uh, sent emails about it to three relatives that do not live near me. Two of them didn't answer me. Why don't they care? I care. And one of them sent me a, a digital thank you note. <laughs> I I would think that they'd make a bigger deal out of it, but, um, well, I asked a, an old friend once, why am I the only one who this, the only one who that? And he said, you only need one. You only need one. Anyway, nonprofit organizations. Um, I usually just cut the address out and save the little colorful sticker that's next to your name and address when they send you free address labels. But this one, this one, I tried to keep it because I don't like to waste things. But this one I got to throw out. Because they're using children's drawings, children who they supposedly help to get money. So I worked several decades ago in South Florida for one of the one of the biggest most famous nonprofit organizations that help children. I physically worked there not with the children that was in another part of the building. I worked there in the part where they had a geriat geriatric daycare center you know, people would drop off their parents or grandparents and they'd have a place to uh, talk to other seniors, have lunch, sit outside in the garden, whatever. And of course, get their medications. That's why they needed me, the nurse. So it was very pleasant there. And um, but I found out shortly that the most valued employee there was the one who could write 
grant applications because then the money would keep coming in and they'd keep getting salaries. Now, although this was several decades ago, the head administrator there was making over 80000 a year. That was a lot of money. And she didn't really do anything, just, you know, act pleasant in meetings, sit at her desk, look at some papers. And I didn't work out there at all. Um, my direct supervisor told me to, when the patients are getting agitated or unhappy, that I should tell them uh, their children are on the way to pick them up, even though they weren't. I'm not going to lie to a patient. All right. Um, then, then she told me to go over the uh, the manual about the rules and regulations. Big manual, lots of bureaucratic stuff in there. And and I needed. She told me I needed to see what corrections were needed and to take care of that. So I found the spelling errors and grammatical errors. So I fixed them. I took out that sheet, put it on the side, typed up a new sheet with the correct spelling, the correct grammar, and I, I took quite a while for this uh, massive project and I gave it back to her all fixed. And, and she said, why did you change the official regulations? And I said, well, you told me to uh, make corrections. She said, those corrections need to go in front of the board of directors and in front of the administrator and they make a deci decision whether to correct it or not. So I wasn't working out there at all. So they started, um, they don't like to let people go because it makes them look bad, especially when they don't have a good reason and especially when I was the right one, I was doing things honestly and legally so they start giving you slightly uh, unfavor unfavorable um, evaluations, even when it's not the time of year for an evaluation. So I said to them in one of these meetings, if you're not happy with me, just tell me and I'll leave. You don't have to make up these fake evaluations. Just tell me. So anyway, uh, before things got worse, um, I just uh, I just left there. I did write a letter to the administrator telling her what was going on. I still have that letter. And so I lasted there a month. There was another job. Uh, it wasn't for a nonprofit. It was um, it was a nursing home. I lasted one day there because they told me, this is exactly how we want this procedure done all the time except when the inspectors are here. When the inspectors are here, you do it this way. And this was going on all day long. I have a pretty good memory, thankfully, but to memorize two sets of rules, the real one when nobody's watching and then the fake one when somebody's watching, I mean, I, I couldn't handle that, you know? It, it didn't compute. So I told them that at the end of the day, I can't stay because of that. And um, the only other job I had where I lasted one day was for this, I don't know if I should say their name, probably not. It's kind of a cult. Uh, they do a lot of psychoanalysis, you know, they give you this uh, question and answer form and they try to figure you out and then they give you psychological suggestions to help you with whatever they think your problems are. That was fine, I'm very open-minded, but towards the end of the first day I said, um, so what will be the salary and, and how often will we get paid? Is it uh, every two weeks or, or something else? And they said, oh, we don't worry about salary. Uh, people in our group, we always survive somehow. We, we don't uh, deal with salary. <laughs> 
See, I'm not the kind of a person that's going to ask about money uh, in front because that's not my priority. My priority is, you know, do something useful. So back to this place, the place that was like this, the place that helps children and helps seniors. I had a friend um, in New Jersey. Uh, I, I was out. And I saw her uh, walking in the street. She walked with crutches, two crutches. And she had a big bag of laundry in each hand. And she's walking very slowly with crutches, carrying two bags of laundry. Or was it two bags of groceries? This was uh, a long time ago in the 70s. Anyway, so I stopped. And I said, do you need some help? She said, yeah. So I helped her carry stuff. And we went to her apartment which was a few blocks from there. And we became friends. And in her apartment, she would uh, use a wheelchair. And she told me how um, she, was, she got married, but the guy only married her so he could uh, get a green card. And then he left. And he left her pregnant. And she has a daughter. And her daughter now lives with her mother. So we became very friendly and I was uh, at the time I had this uh, hobby to make candles you know you buy the bar of wax you melt it you put crayons in it to give it a color and all that and I was living in my mother's house so I invited her over to my mother's uh, to uh, make some candles I thought she'd enjoy that um, get a break from the kind of life uh, she was stuck in there all alone in the apartment in a wheelchair and one thing about my mother, no pets were allowed. I couldn't bring home animals. We couldn't buy an animal. I could have a turtle, you know, it's just in there. It doesn't mess up the place. And it's cheap to feed. And I could have a bird in a cage. But uh, nothing else, except in the summer when we were in the Northeast at the family summer house, then I could have rabbits outside in a cage. But anyway, so not letting me bring animals home but she let me bring people home so instead of injured animals lost animals needy animals i brought home injured people lost people lonely people and she was very gracious with them and um that's a nice memory anyway the point about my friend with the crutches she was one of the poster children of this other famous organization that's uh, still active. And she told me as soon as she grew up, they, they totally ignored her. Um, you know, when she was young and cute and with her crutches or her wheelchair, they, they used her to, to get donations. And they get very, very big salaries for the, the, the top administration. And um, that would be fine if they didn't dump these people. Why didn't they, why don't they keep in contact with them their whole lives? I mean, visit them once in a while, write them a letter, keep a list of their names. I, I've lost contact with that friend and I called the organization and I I told him I can't remember her name, it was so long ago, but I described exactly where she lived. And I said, uh, it sh she should be easy to find because she was one of your official poster children. And I was told that they don't keep that information and they can't help me. So, what is that? It it's terrible. So I'm not going to keep this thing that was sent to me by another organization that supposedly helps children because uh, here they are using the kids, the kids' drawings to make money. I bet they don't give those kids thousands of dollars a year. They, I see those commercials on TV and uh, it's very upsetting. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about nonprofit organizations and um, be very careful what you do with uh, 
money that you want to give to charity. It's so much better to give to a person, a real person that you know personally. I'm sure there's plenty of homeless wherever you live. And uh, you might find some of them living in their car in a parking lot. You can tell who they are by the way they dress. And uh, think about it.